Yes, Lion Pride Massive and Beyond. Just want to say give thanks for tuning in. This is the first Lion Heights attempt at a podcast. Or shall I say, Pa to cast. Lion Pa. Anyway, I don't know what we're going to call it yet. I'm hoping it never even makes it to the air. Well, see, that, that's why we create a great dynamic, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm overly positive and you're just overly pessimistic. So. I just don't like podcasts. Making them. Yeah. Well, how about you, James? What do you think about the uh, I never listen to podcasts. I have better things to do with my time. Damn. <laughs> Just me alone. Just me alone. I love podcasts. I be listening to them every day. I do like the Howard Stern radio TV, uh, show and TV show. Well. However. That's some old. That's a podcast, isn't it? Yeah, it's just radio. He, he has a podcast, I think. Anyway. He probably does. So the whole purpose of this thing is just to talk about nothing at all and give, give everyone some updates on um, what's going on with us. So we release a new song called Reggae on the Rise, and uh, that's going to be cool, just doing some some promo press stuff for that. But uh, other than that, Lion Heights news is kind of kind of slow because the whole music business shutting down. So, you know, we played a yeah. really strange show this weekend um, out in Fredericksburg. That was the first time we've ever been there. Yeah, we played two shows, we, which is crazy in COVID times to be able to actually have like a normal weekend of music yeah it was sahara lounge went great um played that in austin on the east side and that was really really fun and then we played fredericksburg like an hour and a half away and and i swear it felt like kind of like a different country like definitely trump town definitely cowboyville and uh, we played in a saloon and um i don't think these people were ready for reggae music i'm i'm honestly surprised they hired us in the first place they probably shouldn't have hired us they, <laughs> <laughs> because they, well, that's the whole thing. Well, so first of all, you go into a place, I'm trying to think of something that this could like equate to, but it sounds like it's a movie because you walk into a place and pretty much everybody just stares at you. Yeah. Nonstop. Everybody just stares at you. It's almost like you hear that. The but like a, like a saloon like yeah. in, the, in the movies. Like, the, it's like, like when the, the Blues ca- brothers. Y- yeah. <laughs> like, um, Yeah. Like when the cowboy steps in with his, uh, you know, spurs on, and everybody just like, who just walked in the saloon? Yeah. That's what it was like. And it was funny because I'm from Texas, but everyone else in the band is not from Texas. And you guys have been around enough that you guys know. And I wish Tom was here to tell us, but Tom, he just moved to Austin. And that was like his first experience in like a really Texas cowboy kind of place. And he, he was like... Like when we when we went in to load in and then we came out, he was like, "You felt threatened." I thought this only existed in the movies. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did too before I moved here. Like everyone wearing cowboy hats and all this shit. It's real, and but, people were like, "It's the band. Look, it's the band." You could hear people talking about you. <laughs> it's the band. Yeah, and I mean, but generally everybody was very very nice, and like I, I thought the crowd was like really dope. They were they were I think they received us well, and. I had a great time talking to people. There were, you know, there was some very drunk people there at the beginning. We showed up and people were already like, mm. well, a ahead. lot of drunk bridesmaids. This is wine country, if you don't know. I think you've never been yeah. out to Fredericksburg before. A big thing is there's a whole bunch of wineries out there and people go, um, especially when we were out there on a Saturday, people spend all day getting bussed around from winery to winery, trying different wines and pretending that they can tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> A bridesmaid threw uh, my set list at me on stage. Tell, yeah, tell, tell the people exactly what happened, James. I, yeah, because people kept talking to you throughout the whole show. Because every time I would look over at you, you're talking to somebody off the stage while well, everybody else is playing. Mostly people were trying to just request songs like Sublime or some pseudo reggae kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, I would say to tell Jeremy, because he's the one who's got to sing it, so it's up to him. Um, but one girl came up. A drunk bridesmaid, and she asked for a uh, ox cable, and I said, "Why do you want an ox cable for?" And she's wow. like, and she was really drunk, and she said, uh, "I just want to hear this song right now. Like, it's just like this one I want to hear." And wow. uh, while we're playing on yeah. stage, so I told her that, and uh, I also told her there's a DJ in the back, and uh, if she really wants to, when we're on our break, she can 
go talk to him and he could probably play it for you and uh that you were being re- really polite i would not have even been that polite yeah. yeah so then eventually uh she didn't believe that there was a dj even though i was pointing at him and uh when I went back to play, because I had a part that was coming up that wasn't written, yeah. um, she uh, got really mad and threw my set list at me. Oh and then God. all these older women were kind of staring at me like, what's her problem? And uh, yeah, the last thing we saw her was she was running down barefoot down Main Street, Fredericksburg. <laughs> oh, really? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And she had purple hair for some reason. Wow. Yeah. Was it one of the bridesmaids parties where they all wear those different color wigs? Yes. Like you see in uh, Austin where there's like a red wig and a green wig and a purple wig and a blue wig. So anyway, other than that, I thought that the show was cool. Um, I doubt they're going to invite us back. <laughs> Under Why is this that? Band name? Because what happened after our second set? I guess you already knew something. So, yeah. You already knew something. I didn't. And the rest of the band... Didn't know. Didn't know. This but Dane was told something before we started our second out of our third set of the night. What was yeah. that? It, while we were playing, uh, the sound guy came up and said, hey, uh, the owner said that if you guys are going to play reggae all night, then uh, you know we're just not going to do the third set. So after this set, you guys can be done. I was like, really? And I was like, is, do you guys need more energy? Like, what is it? He was like, yeah, I mean, you, you just got to keep the crowd. And like, I'm looking out at the crowd. They're there dancing to the music. And I'm yeah. just, I was... I didn't know. So I, we even scrapped the set and just kind of started f- like working off songs that we thought they might know. And I thought it went well. I'm not sure. Uh, and then when we got off the stage, everybody was like, when are you guys playing again? When are you guys playing again? And we just yeah. had to say we're not. So, I mean, it's it's nice to go home early. But at the same time, it does feel a little kind of insulting to say, like, go back on the agreement and say, because we signed up for the three sets and we plan our music accordingly. But, I mean, I can't take it too personal. Business is business. Still got paid, though. We so. still got paid. Still got paid. And they run their their show different than what we're used to. You know what I mean? So we just got to go with it and just not let the ego get in the way and get in our feelings about we didn't get to play. Anyway, moving on. It was a strange weekend. And, you know, it's always fun to, to leave Austin. It's always an adventure. So in in this great state of Texas, Austin really does feel like a a different type of oasis in in Texas, you know. It doesn't. It doesn't because I feel like that 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 same place that we played could have been in Austin. I feel like too. It could, yeah. Because they, I feel like there are, granted, a lot less, but I feel like there's the same kind of people. Mm-hmm. No disrespect to them, but I feel like there's that same kind of group of people here. You just don't see them as much because they're not so concentrated Mm -hmm. yeah but that reminded me more of like being out in lubbock or like even in college station like the one bar i didn't play out there but the one bar i went to was like that and everybody had like boots on and cowboy hats and even when i just walked in in regular clothes without an instrument everybody was like who's that dude yeah yeah (laughs) like he's not from funny one another thing i noticed is that people keep kept coming up to me and jeremy and asking about political stuff but not you james Nobody was getting political with James. It's because I don't have dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your theory, but I'm not sure. That's I, my theory, yeah. Maybe it's because you have blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> are, are you in the Aryan Brotherhood, James? We denounce the Aryan Brotherhood here. <laughs> yeah, we actively denounce all yeah. allegiance to the Aryan Brotherhood. Um, <laughs> you say that like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. It is. Yeah. But... but there are not good like people on both sides. <laughs> huh? We don't want to make them more official, though. Okay, you're right about that. But, yeah, I just thought it was weird that, um, you know, people would come up saying they like the music and blah, blah, blah. And then it would, it would eventually the conversation would boil down to something political. You know, are we fans of Trump? Or one guy was like, yeah, you know, socialism's here and we voted it in. And I'm like... We did? He needs to give <laughs> he needs to give back his uh stimulus checks if he got any then. Right? Mm-hmm. Just I saying. mean Yeah, I mean that is a form of socialism right there. I mean we need that. Uh, to me, I'm I'm not trying to, I don't want to get too political in this, but like we need some help. Everybody in this time needs some help. These people you know? don't know what equity is, man. Yeah. It's the and, difference between equity and equality and they think that you like the same with oh, well, my tax money has to go to help bums pay for their food and, and this and that. Like, uh, maybe, like, a very small percent of it is, but, like, the, that's the idea is to those with more help out those with less. 
Yeah. Like, and it always gets skewed to be like, well, I, you know, I don't, you know. Well, I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> that's the same thing, though. You know what you're talking about, yeah. but um, yeah, man, I mean, the, the argument that he was trying to make was like all these taxes, he doesn't want to pay for all this extra shit, and I'm like, how much of our taxes right now do they waste on silly stuff like new fighter jets and new stuff? We're not even at war, we're paying for, you know, military-grade equipment, all this shit, even for the local police, the city spends all this money on local police to have more than they need, you know what I mean? So in that regard, I'm like, I'm okay to pay more taxes, and I also want to see them put the, uh, the, t the taxes we already pay in the right place. And as long as, like, we can get a control on, like, helping our own community, I'm for taxes. Otherwise, yeah, I'm against taxes, too. Like, I'm against... Yeah, I'm taxes against, in general. Yeah, well, like, like the it's federal... it's not cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not cool, but at the same time... That's why I like the 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 tra like anything to make Austin transportation better and make it make people have to drive their cars less. I'm for that. You know, we need to get people out of their cars in Austin more. That's something that I personally feel affected by here. So, I don't know. It's 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 funny because we're all probably more center than we make ourselves out to be. Like everybody's I'm liberal, I'm conservative whatever but really when it comes down to it when we just speak about these issues without trying to align ourselves with any like specific political thing you know we agree a lot more because i could find reasons and things that i agreed with them about as well yeah you know and i was trying to i was trying to kind of sneak that into the conversation too without trying to sound like i'm not on their team but anyway then dude started talking about <laughs> the clintons drinking drinking blood of children's people. blood and <laughs> yeah and i love conspiracies this i mean this is episode one but and i hope to get into some conspiracies yeah, but this was like a fact to this guy he was like i already I already done did the research yeah i love this type of stuff but that specific conspiracy is very crazy to me that one i, I didn't really i wasn't a fan of that one um so but he, he was trying to go all into it and all the QAnon stuff i'm not really following them but i don't know anything about that well we're going to talk about it later on because I, I just love talking about this crazy time we're living in and how everybody had, you know, the great awakening seems to be right now. But it's kind of like there's the truth has been awakened and also the, the lies. Like there's just as much lies as there is truth right now coming at us. So it's hard for us to figure it out. But that's what we're going to do here at the Lion Pride. We're going to figure it out together. That's right, buddy. It's, have you guys heard any new music that you really like, reggae or not? Anything new? Yes. What, what were you jamming? Uh, I've been listening to live performances by Frank Vignola, who is a jazz guitar Spell player. that. Spell that for you. G-N-O-L-L-A. All right. Vignola. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jazz? Jazz guitar. He has a cool acoustic duo and trio that, uh, um, yeah, there's a bunch of videos of them playing online. They're pretty well put together and orchestrated and pretty cool yeah man i've been jamming protege's new record a lot i heard one song from that come up on shuffle um man i'm trying to remember what it was called it's called like in my f it was like i'm scrolling through itunes self-defense is what it's called oh yeah yeah self-defense that came on shuffle the other day that's the only tune i've heard off the new record besides the other singles that he released I always like his production, man. I, he always has a good team behind him, and Winter James is a good producer. Did he do the whole this whole one I'm like he sure. did the other one? I, you know, I'm really not sure because I just started listening to it, but um, I would just recommend everybody go out there and, and check that, that album out. So And Lila Ike and Savannah also released some new stuff, uh, you know, maybe months ago, but still it could be new to a lot of people. Savannah's new um, little demo is pretty cool. It's a mix of reggae and some kind of R&B vibes. So, I listened to something on the way over here. It's not new music, but it's it's I had um, I haven't listened to them in a long time. Uh, they're a band called the Cat Empire, which is Australian. Oh yeah, yeah, Dane. I know about you that. You know band. them? They're yeah. Australian, yeah. Um, and Dane's Australian, if you didn't know, that's why he knows about them. Um, <laughs> Actually, not at all. It was like, <laughs> I think they it's were like popular. a hive mind Australian thing where they just no, know about everything. They were popular. Um, and it's a band that I used to listen to in high school, um, and that my high school band kind of listened to for uh, influence. 
they're like a they do some reggae and they have some Latin influences and they have some kind of pop influences. It's they're an interesting band, but I haven't listened to them in like since since high school pretty and much. Released a new and for song? some reason I no, they didn't it, this is just their old album that I was listening to, mm-hmm. but they just popped in my head this morning for some reason. And I was like, "Oh, well, I should listen to that." Cuz I like listening to music that I haven't listened to in a long time that I li- used to listen to let's say in high school or beforehand. Mm-hmm. And it, you can listen to it with an older brain and still yeah. be like, do I still like this? Do I? Yep. And sometimes it's like, nope, I don't. And sometimes it's yep. like, yeah, I do. Or sometimes you like it more. There's a lot of bands. Like I think pop punk for me is something that I'm just like, nah, I don't really like that anymore. Yeah. But like oh, the OG punk, like I still like the Sex Pistols. I still like Bad Brains. You know, I still like, there's certain things that I still really enjoy. Like, for instance, Van Halen. We did the Halloween Van Halen. That's a band that all three of us yeah. liked for a long time and still still vibe it. If you know, if you want to see what we're talking about, it's on YouTube, our Van Halen mm-hmm. Halloween show. But, um, yeah, it's funny to go back and listen to some of that old music. Right, James? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, James. Well, what's a conversation topic that, I, that you brought to the podcast that I asked you to bring last night in advance? Um, I heard that Gwen Stefani was going to be leaving The Voice. Oh, man. <laughs> when did she leave No Doubt? What? What? Did she ever leave No Doubt? I think so. I don't know. I th- yeah, no, no one. She, she did a long time ago. Um, I think Blake Lively. Maybe it's a conflict of interest that they're both on the... Uh, Do you really watch the about Blake voice? Shelton? Whatever, I don't know. The guy that she used to be with? Not she still is. <laughs> oh. Are they married? I don't know. Wait, I don't watch Blake, that show. Who's Blake Lively then? Blake Lively is uh, oh, Ryan right. Reynolds' wife. Oh, yeah. She's a From babe. Gossip Girls? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she is a babe. You're right. Yeah, yeah. She's okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I had. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Well, and that's a show you watch, James, The Voice. No, I've actually never seen it. Oh. Speaking of these dumb I've shows. Seen clips of it. Have but... you guys seen The Masked Singer at all? A little bit, but I don't really. Why? Oh, just because it's one of it's like the same category of thing. They do they do the same thing pretty much, except it's a, it's like a celebrity who I think the point is of them to not be a singer. Oh, okay. Um, to ha- and they have this whole mask and costume on. I and heard they about sing it when for Wendy people. Williams was on it. Yeah, like other people, like there's been like basketball players on it, and like you know just other celebrities, movie stars, and stuff like that. But they make it through rounds, kind of like American Idol, but you don't know who this is, and the panel's trying to, like, guess who they are. And then you get, like, clues. They do, like, an intro, and you get clues to who they are, and you try to figure out. But someone really famous, though? I mean, they're all really famous. None of them's going to be like, it's Bobby Jones, because nobody knows who that is. The last one I heard about was Wendy Williams, and, you know, she has a very distinct voice. Yeah, in a talk show. But, like, they don't talk, and you can't see their voice. All they do, the only time you can hear their voice is when they're singing. Oh. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I'd be able to pick out Norm Macdonald if he was the one. I can't think of Maybe. any other any other ones. What if I, had, I saw a few of them. And what if he has a beautiful voice and you're it. like, damn, Norm? Cause, I mean, sometimes I think when I speak and when I sing, people are like, oh, that was you? That was you on the record? You know what I mean? Norm's a good story. Like Lil Wayne did one. He was really? one of them. That's pretty Does funny. he have an uh, angelic voice? I don't know. I, didn't th- I don't think I watched that one. Did y'all hear uh, Lil Wayne got in trouble for having a gun or some shit and going to jail I didn't again see that. didn't you yeah. do that yeah recently and people were talking about oh trump should pardon him because he supported trump right and so while he's still president he should go and help but lil wayne charged with firearm possession isn't that silly to be i mean but i, I guess it was just he didn't have the the permit he didn't have all the right credentials well, it says because he's a oh, he's prior a felon. felony offender. He can't have the firearm. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's, a, that's a dumb thing to put somebody away for. That's like, a, that's like one of them uh, a rules that prey yeah. on uh, the black community to make people go back to jail. You there know? was a uh, handgun and his luggage on a private plane. Yes, yeah, so it like, wasn't pri- even on oh him. My God. Like, it wasn't even on his body. Like, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's kind of dumb, I think. That sucks. I mean, also Lil Wayne, like, 
maybe you should just like let your security guys have a gun and maybe like you should yeah. put yourself in that position as a guy who sings about that all the time. It's yeah. like the dudes that sing about smoking weed all the time and then they get pulled over by the cops and like, man, like, what do you think was going to happen? Exactly. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> all the time. I swear, when I came back from Cancun, the dog, they, they did like a, uh, a false positive on me because I did not have anything and I had not been smoking for that whole time. And unless my stuff just smells like weed, but they, the dog just came straight up to me, you know, and they went through everything. They wanted to even x-ray my base. Cause they were like, like they, I feel like they trained the dogs to make other indications. They're like, oh, see, look, he's indicating. And they're like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it's, they train them to like, oh yeah, he's indicating right there. We're going to search you now. It's the, like, the woman was on his own butt. Totally. Cause you was a normal <laughs> civilian. You don't know what the dog's communicating no. to them because you're not a you know, uh, like like dog trainer yeah like, I don't know what they train they could do anything they could they could make any movement you're like oh that that means that he smells something get him yeah <laughs> yeah and the woman was real aggressive with me too she was like just coming back into america yeah coming back going out it was <laughs> dude it was really funny going they like out, it when you leave yeah well we're going out we we got like we were we were walking off the plane going into the customs area and they were like diverting a few people like we could see the the exit but like some people they were like no you go over here and like go through an extra x-ray and so of course they did it to us so we go over there and then like we were waiting in line to do the x-ray and then we realized that other than the attendant doing the x-ray there's nobody over there so we just get out of line and just walk back and just leave and nobody stopped us you know what i mean so it was super chill because I was like, it, I really don't want to get x-rayed again. What's the point? Yeah. So coming back, I did, we didn't have anything on us. I just had my bass guitar and like my little suitcase. And yeah, the, the woman immediately comes up to us, comes up to me, alerts. And then she goes, uh, gentlemen, uh, have you guys been partying? I'm just like, what do you mean by partying? They're like, you know. That's a yes. <laughs> you, you know, smoking the reefer, doing the blow and stuff like that. I'm like, no, like, no. And honestly, I was telling the truth, no. Um, and she was like, well, we'll see, blah, blah, blah. And she, they go through all my shit and they're like, we're going to have to x-ray this base. This base is a little heavier than it should be. And I'm like, and yeah, because you guys totally know. <laughs> the Steinberger base is so light. You and never picked up a Les Paul. I know. Yeah. <laughs> And so they, they, they x-rayed it. They went through everything. They were tripping out because I brought magnesium with me, like those pills. Ooh. What's wrong with that? Well, they were like, we're going to have to... And I didn't put it in a pill jar. Ooh. I had it in like a saran wrap. Can you buy magnesium over the counter here? Yeah, but they don't know what it is. They just see pills filled with white powder in a plastic bag. Oh. Yeah. And so they had to test like four of them to make sure. And he was like, sorry. And the guy in the end was like, sorry, I had to waste your magnesium. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I told you what it was and you didn't believe me. So they let us go. But they were like... They Luckily, they didn't test the ones with coke in it. <laughs> right. They really wanted to find something. They were like, yeah. this guy has something. We're going to get him. Were you wearing your dare shirt? No, I should have been. Wait, yeah. why do you have magnesium? I don't get it. I just take it it's good like, for you. every once in a while. Oh. Yeah. You never got magged up before? <clears throat> no. Yeah, bro. Man. I've been electrolyte, though. <laughs> electrolyte. I mean, you just got to take some vitamins and stuff every once in a while, especially right. being vegetarian. Vitamin B. Today? Yeah. Why do you take fish oils? They're good for your heart. Who who says that? What's, what, what science is that? The Surgeon General. Because <laughs> I've never heard that fish oil is good for your heart. I heard it's good for uh, something. It's good for your skin know. and hair, too. And your nails. Show, show me the science, James. <laughs> to Google. All right, well, while James is figuring out why fish oil is good for you. I don't doubt you. I'm just, I'm just wondering for the sake of uh, wondering. I take really a B vitamin. I think I take a D vitamin. Well, you know what? Health and wealth. Health is wealth. So oh, my God. It's, you know. Wall Street Journal just put out an article two hours ago that says, The fraud of fish oil is exposed. Will kill be next? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, breaking news. We're breaking news here on the Lion Heights podcast. You heard it here first. Fish oil is a scam. <laughs> oh, wow. Two days ago on other news outlets, it says uh, fish oil doesn't seem to prevent heart problems See? and may even harm it. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, my. James. My grandma has lied to me for my whole life. Oh, if you or grandma. anybody you've known has been taking fish oil in the last several years, you may be entitled to... This is hilarious. Basically, cash everything settlement. will kill you, so we should just not eat anything and just drink water and eat raw nuts. Yeah, I agree. I love that. I love raw nuts. 
So do I. <laughs> Man, I bet you do. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's my favorite snack. It's my favorite snack. Mm-hmm. It's it's so expensive. We should we should. I had a ten dollar bag though that was like a pound from Randall's that lasted. Uh, it's keto friendly for all you keto people out there. Um, I don't know what that is. Just means I don't really know either. <laughs> raw. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just a raw diet, isn't it? No, keto is not a raw diet. Keto is the, the the only thing I know about keto is pretty much you're not allowed to have sugar, and there's probably other stuff you're not allowed to have. Oh, that's Red. good. I because be. um, what it does is I'm going to talk a lot about a lot of stuff I don't know right now, real quick. Is it puts your body into ketosis, which the only thing I know about that is your body, like your body thinks it's hungry because it's not getting like the sugars or whatever, hmm. but. Your mind, you're still eating, so your mind is like, I feel good. So it's not like you're like, I'm hungry, but your body thinks I'm hungry. Hmm. So your body is burning fat. the fat that normally your body stores for that scenario. Mm-hmm. And so it eats up your fat really, really quick. And that's how you're able to lose so much weight. And that's why oh. you're able to eat weird stuff like, you can eat as much meat as you want, but you can't eat any fruit. You can't which sounds salts. ridiculous, but it's because the fruit... Sweet, has has sugar. sugars, nat- even naturally occurring sugars. Oh. Your body's going to start to process that. And what you're going to try to get your body to do is not process anything that's coming in, but process what's already there. Okay. So if that's you eat cool. certain things while on the diet, yeah, it'll throw it off and you'll but have to start I over again. I need the opposite of that. Yeah. I don't but wanna... the thing about it is people think it's like a lifestyle diet that like you live your life that way. Keto, that's super bad for you. I mean, it's I imagine. It's just lose weight. It's like a crash diet in my opinion. Like it's like a you do this for X amount of time to like lose whatever you want to lose and then like go back to eating normal stuff because okay. you can't like just not eat fruit. Like it's good for yeah. you. <laughs> like it's, yeah. I think it's, it's good ridiculous. for you too. But that's what, I, that's the way I understand it. So. Well, mm. there you go. Like, Nuts and water people. That's yeah. all you need to survive. You heard it first from Jeremy of Lion Heights. Also, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> There's also the famous uh, chicken, white, chicken wing diet in the 40s. Oh, yeah. Was it 40s? That's that's your famous. It was diet. chicken wings and ham, yeah. ham's beer. Maceo, I mean. Really? Ham's beer, yeah. Yeah. Really? You'll that's laugh. what Eric told me. Yeah. Now this has just become gossiping. We love you, Omis. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I heard. I heard that uh, that uh, he lo- he lost a bunch of weight by just drinking hams and and wings, chicken wings. That you might have <laughs> lost weight, but I cannot see that being good for you. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you need greens. I can't speak on it. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I don't know, man. That don't make sense. But you know what? Everybody's different. So I can't really say. Your body craves different things. My body craves different things. To me, I have to have vegetables or I feel messed up, you know. I need all the leafy greens and the juices and the the fruits and the the nuts, buddy. Speaking of which, um, I went to look at my ibuprofen this morning. And uh, it's been expired for two years. And I'm wondering why it hasn't been doing anything. Oh, really? It doesn't work at all? It's two years old. Damn. Well, someone's at the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, I'm going to take that opportunity right. to say to sign off. But thank you for listening to the Lion Pride podcast. Yes. And uh, Join know, our mailing list if you haven't already. Please. You might be hearing this through our mailing list. Who knows? I don't know because I don't know what we're going to do with this podcast. But Yeah, but you, you'll, you'll, you'll hear yelling. from us. Yeah. All right. Banging. We'll be back soon. Till next time. Yeah, and I'm just gonna play Reggae on the Rise for you. It's our latest release, and um, hopefully, but every podcast we can kind of add something exclusive at the end for you to check out and listen to. All right. See y'all next time. Peace.
Thank you. 